welcome to PRMM Interview, and today I have Meredith Moore as my guest. Hi, Meredith. Hi, Susie. We're here in Dallas on a steamy Friday evening, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Meredith, can you introduce yourself to our guest tonight? Sure thing. My name is Meredith Moore. I have been a creative project manager for five years, and I have been a creative professional for about 15. And uh, I love working in both the creative project world and in the creative world together. So creative project management, help us understand what that is. I'm not sure if many have that type of person on staff or understand what a creative project manager does. Yes, a uh, creative project manager is a little different than a project manager, but you have to have the same kind of mindset. Very organized, uh, very linear, but at the same time multifaceted. Uh, you deal a lot more with the creative attitudes that people have, and that it's not a bad thing. Uh, creatives are a wonderful bunch to work with. They are fun, and they keep things alive, and they come up with wonderful ideas. You just have to be able to be flexible enough to take those on when you have, at the same time, a very organized way of doing things. So it's, it's a lot of structure and flexibility all in one. Uh, to be a creative project manager. So when an organization is thinking about bringing on a creative project manager, what are probably the one or two things they should be looking out for in someone to bring on in that role? I would say one of the greatest things that you need to look for when you're looking for a creative project manager is somebody who's actually been in the trenches. This is not true for regular project managers when you're dealing with IT or construction. But with creative project management, there is a huge understanding that you have to have in order to manage creatives. There needs to be a respect there. And when you're coming up with timelines and budgets, you really have to know what it takes in order to make things like a logo or a brand identity book. These things are not just the construction of the piece. There are a lot of thought, a lot of emotion, a lot of late nights and cat videos. <laughs> you need to know and understand. You need to have been there yourself. So if you're looking for somebody who's a creative project manager, make sure that they have actually been in the creative field before. That is probably one of the biggest things I would say. Um, another really big thing is, depending on the size of your company, um, being able to have a, a person who can be firm to your company standards. Uh, some larger companies need project managers to be more firm than smaller companies. Um, this is a really delicate area and you have to think about it before hiring someone in creative project management. Think about your creatives. Think about their professionalism. Are they young? Are you dealing with Millennials or Gen Xers, uh, people who can nurture the young creatives along without making them feel marginalized. Uh, those are the kind of things that you really have to think about that's based on your company's kind of culture. So what about the others, other way around? Uh, maybe you're creative or you're doing project management and you're thinking of getting into this space. Uh, what's a consideration that you should have before you determine if this is the right uh, career choice for you? Yeah, it takes an interesting kind of person. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, most creatives are not analytical. Um, and most analytical people don't have the creative side to do this. If you are a creative and wanting to go into uh, the creative project management, which I think is a great field to go into if you feel like um, you're not going to go into a creative direction role or an art director role, but you still want to be involved in creativity, start looking at management. Learn uh, PMP, just get the handbook, <laughs> just learn it all. Um, but creative project management is a little bit different, but knowing those skills and those terms are paramount. Um, if you are on the analytical side and you're a project manager, a traditional project manager, you're going to PMP, and you want to get into creative project management, 
spend a lot of time with creatives. Go take some classes in creative. I'm not just saying taking a painting class, but take um, a web design class or a graphic design class. Start doing these things so you can really see what it takes to make something and not just the skill that's needed, but the emotion that's needed. And also it helps you clarify who's a really good creative and who might be marginal on your team. That's a great point. And you went into a little bit, um, the question I always like to ask all our guests, what it takes to um, get started in the career. So let me ask you uh, one last question. You do a charity, yes. uh, and I think it's a great charity. Would you like to explain a little bit about the charity and just sort of, uh, I would love to understand how you get the word out about it. Oh, yes. Um, well, you get to use a lot of creativity with it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing quite like uh, working with a zero budget to make you creative. Oh, wait, marketing people are used to that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hurting volunteers has been something that I feel like my creative project management <laughs> and uh, people skills has come in handy with. Um, but I, I have a nonprofit, a uh, 501c3 called Simple Plenty, and um, I listen to my board, and they're very helpful and very instructional. Um, and I have a, a lot of volunteers that help with this every day, so I can't say that I'm the only one doing <laughs> anything. Um, it's what we do is we make sure that charities um, and individuals uh, have ways of sharing what we call in-kind donations or just goods in general. Um, no money. <laughs> but sometimes a charity will get items that they don't need, mm -hmm. but another charity may need those items, and that other charity may have items that the first charity needed. So we make sure that we come together and get these charities what they need from each other. Um, no money exchanges hands, but the goods do. Uh, with the person, the individual, uh, we make sure that we have events where people can do things like trade clothes mm -hmm. or trade um, food even, uh, you know, just canned goods or things like that. You know, everybody's bought the mac and cheese in bulk and you're like, I cannot eat another thing of mac and cheese. But then there's a neighbor who's done the same with some other product. So getting groups of neighbors together and people together. Um, we do it with clothing. We've done the clothing exchange for 10 years, which has been very successful. And uh, everything that's left over from these exchange events, uh, they all go to different charities who have asked for those specific items. So once again, everybody gets what they need and we're, we're super happy. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining me on a hot and steamy Ooh. day in Dallas. Yes. For a glass of wine. Indeed. Cheers. And cheers to everyone there. And so thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in learning more, just subscribe right here. Have a good day.